Hello everyone, in this video I want to talk about how to play Elisa in Tekken 8. If you haven't watched one of my character guides before, what I really like to do is make a lot of notes and then make kind of long and in-depth guides on characters. I think that's very useful for a game as complex as Tekken. But Tekken 8 has only been out for a couple of days, so this version will be a little bit more basic. It's kind of a starter guide to give you an idea of whether or not this character is for you and if you feel that she might be. Um, sort of where to start and how to begin playing her, right? I hope it's useful if you've played her in the past. I hope it's useful if you've never played her before. I will do full character guides, you know, really in-depth guides on a bunch of characters in this game as I, you know, learn them. So if that sounds interesting, feel free to stick around. Um, but let's jump in with Elisa, the character that I'm currently maining in these early stages of Tekken 8. Uh, really enjoying her. The fun factor is huge. She's had some big crazy changes, but uh, she's sort of the same basic playstyle with a lot of like new fun cool toys sort of added on top. So there are no really fundamental changes to the character. But what kind of a character are you looking at? Well, Elisa has always been sort of movement based. You can tell that she's very agile on her feet. She moves fast. She has a really good backdash um, and she retains that in this game. She feels very, very um, swift. Now movement is as good as it's been in previous versions of Tekken in this game. Um, you travel as far when you move is what I mean. However, it also seems that movement is a little bit more risky and has a slightly diminished role because of how focused the game is uh, around aggression right now. So if you've played her in the past, a big adjustment you're gonna have to make with this character, and it can be a little bit jarring in the beginning. If you're very used to playing a defensive style, where you're hitting with small pokes and kind of moving around, you're gonna have to be prepared to switch more into offense and going in a little bit more if you're gonna be able to sort of uh, compete in Tekken 8. Otherwise, you're just gonna be very behind in terms of dealing damage and sort of your health economy. Um, so if you are a legacy player, I, um, I would advise you to sort of try and adjust to a slightly more aggressive playstyle with her, even though she still has that great movement and those great pokes. Now, the really cool thing about Elisa, right, if you've never played her before, she basically has two modes that she switch, uh, switches between. This basic one right here, and then one where she brings out these chainsaw blades on her arms. They're called Destructive Stance. And if you want to know when it's time to go in and play more aggressive, it's basically when these are out. You know, she kind of teaches you that very easily. It's easy to know. When you don't have the chainsaws out, maybe play a little bit more restrictive. When they are out, it's time to go in and do a lot of attacking, right? The chainsaws, when you have them out and your opponent attacks you and you block something, they actually go away. So your idea is to like try and capitalize on them while you have them out and then they're gonna go away and you're gonna have to look for another opportunity to bring them out and deal your damage. And I think that's kind of how she's gonna function in this game. In um, Tekken 7, for example, it was more like you're using pokes and then movement to set up launches and combos and deal your damage. Now I think it's more like you're trying to get into chainsaws. You're trying to get into chainsaws with heat. And that's where a lot of your damage is gonna be coming from. You also have exceptional damage with Elisa in this game, which I think is cool. Now, there are other characters that deal even more, even crazier damage, but it's it's definitely high for her, and it's higher than it's been in the past. Um, a lot of that is due to this new move she has right here, which just deals a, a bunch, um, and it really shores up the, the combo damage for her overall. So the playstyle is sort of defensive movement based, a lot of good pokes, and then you bring up the chainsaws and you go into heat and then it's time to go in and try and, and, and basically tear your opponent apart in, in a short amount of time, right? Um, let's talk about some of your uh, key moves with this character, then we're going to talk a little bit about heat and then maybe some stances and combos. I don't have a script for this one, so we're just going to like, you know, um, improvise as we go along until we've covered uh, everything that I want to talk about. So Elisa's pretty much most famous and iconic move historically has always been this down back three. It might not look like much, you know, compared to Electric Wind, God Fists and all the rest of it, but it is actually a very, very good move that you should use a lot with her. It's um, a fast 16 frame to impact low poke that is minus two on hit. Minus two on hit might not sound very good, but it's actually kind of normal in Tekken. The move has really good range good crush properties. It can hit 
uh, from very far out. It struggles to hit specifically Lars at some angles, like from the front, like this. You can tell it kind of goes through his foot a little bit. Um, but it has, I think, even better range in this game than it's had in the past. It feels like it's very, very long. Um, so this is a fantastic low, and with Elisa, you're kind of using this and then back dashing out, or using uh, using this and then sidestepping, or maybe even sidewalking. Um, and you're just peppering these, you know, throughout. You can uh, use it to hit people on the ground, which is very good. But it's sort of a key harassment tool from her, and, and where a lot of stuff begins. We can talk about her other lows now that we are talking about lows. For a low poke, she basically has one other important option, and it's the down four. This move is heavily buffed in uh, in this game, and I'm going to be using it a lot more. This was already kind of ambiguously good in seven. Uh, I watched a Cuddle Core video, you know, one of the best Elisas in the world, and she was like, "Don't underestimate this move. It's it's better than you think," and she's right, obviously. But it's like even better now because. This high extension uh, cannot be ducked if the low connects. So they've made it jail, uh, sort of, in this game. Which means that you can throw the extension out, and as long as you don't get your low poke here, the low section blocked or parried, um, it's actually very, very safe. It's plus minus zero on uh, block, right? The high. Which means that um, you can go straight into something fast and keep your pressure up. Your opponent might not be aware of that frame dead and make a mistake, you know? And then if you get a counter hit with the low, the extension will just connect and you get 38 damage and some half-decent Oki. So it's a very good move that I'm going to be using a lot more. However, it doesn't have that high crush. It's also fast impact at minus 17. On block, by the way, this is minus 12 and the down back 3 is minus 13. So um, it's good to have useful low pokes that aren't like launch punishable. You know, that's a curse for some uh, characters even if it doesn't impede them too much. I'm looking at you, Feng. Um, then you have a big sort of power low and down back four. This is risky, 24 to 25 frames to impact means that opponents can see this and they can launch, punish it if they do. Um, a really cool thing about it is that if you're at the wall, you can hold down and you can stay in uh, full crouch and then you can do this low the next move we're going to talk about and get that guaranteed if your opponent's back is to the wall because they won't be knocked away this far and it's it's a lot of guaranteed damage but it's very risky they can block it and launch you right so it's kind of an onliney strand um the final really good low uh, that you have here from neutral is this move it's called a sad hound the notation is full crouch uh, 1 plus 2, so you're just holding down to crouch and then pressing 1 plus 2. It's plus 5 on hit, which is very good. It also has the option of going into chainsaws, which a bunch of different moves uh, do. We're going to talk about more of these later. But just know that uh, going into chainsaws with advantage is, is good and kind of a, uh, a goal for Elisa. When she is not in chainsaws, she does not excel at all at mix-ups, in my opinion, because her lows, I mean, you can see that they're quite small and they don't really knock down. So it's difficult for her to threaten mix-ups, right? For mids, she has this new thing, which we're, we're gonna talk about later, and some other options, I guess. But she's not a mix-up character until the chainsaws come out, and then, now all of a sudden, she has lows and, and really powerful mix-up options and, and re really good frame data. So getting into destructive form or, or chainsaws is kind of a, a goal for the character, right? So this is a good uh, way of doing that. Um, so those are some of your uh, key lows. So if we're going to talk about some mids, the other like classic, famous, great Elisa move is the back one. It's a very long range, uh, fast 15 frame mid. Plus eight on hit is very good. On block it's minus five, so you're very safe and you can uh, actually move and do stuff after this still. So just a great, great move. It has an extension that I don't recommend you use that much. It looks like this, it's like back one, one plus two, one plus two. Um, the only reason this might be good sometimes is if the second hit counter hits, the entire thing is going to launch and you can get like big damage. However, um, if it doesn't counter hit, if your opponent doesn't swing here, they're gonna like launch you for using it, right? So it, it's not a great move, but be aware that the, the option exists and then you throw it once in a blue moon and then it's like, you know, uh, memes or whatever. So, but, but back one by itself is the whole thing. It's really, really great. It's a combo duel. It's, it's just a, a, a really great mid. Another cool thing about it is it also allows you to uh, go into full crouch and it um, 
gives you this big advantage, right? So you can, for example, hit with this, stay down, and then go into your sad hound, for example. And if that connects, you get a plus five, and you can sort of keep going, maybe take the chainsaws out, stuff like that. Just a very good sort of keep out and sort of aggressive tool. Crush properties, fantastic, right? So you, you like this. You have a down for one with Elisa. It's kind of unorthodox, minus six, so not great on block, but not terrible. Plus five on hit, 13 frames, so it's sort of a standard-ish. Um, mid poke, it doesn't hit very low to the ground, it's not very floaty, um, but it's okay. Uh, you're gonna use it, you know, uh, as a standard down forward one. You're, you're gonna use its extensions sometimes. Um, these, um, the second and third hit here are both high and duckable, so they're dangerous, but if they don't duck, then, you know, you're gonna get the chainsaws out, deal some chip damage, which is cool, right? We're gonna talk more about chip damage later, but it's kind of a niche of hers. Even, you know, all characters deal chip damage in this game, but it's kind of specifically a niche of um, Elisa's, right? You also have, in my opinion, one of the best fish hooks in the game. Fish hook is like a generic term I use for, sorry, lost my controller right there. For a 12 frame mid, so this is your fastest mid, basically. Advantage on hit, safe, but kind of minus, you know, minus seven on block. So when you need to interrupt or score a quick hit, this is really, really good. The range is surprisingly good, actually. I don't know if this bit, it's been buffed in this version of the game, but for a mid this fast, uh, this range is, is very, very impressive. So this is another good, like, uh, poking tool for you. You also have some uh, decent jabs. You have a one, two, which looks like this. Uh, you know, not a lot of damage, but it's, uh, it's a good tool to have. It's got this extension, which has been changed to uh, 1, 2, down 1 plus 2 now. It can still be charged, which, which turns it into like a low launcher. It's not very strong and you shouldn't use it that much. However, it becomes a powerful wall combo still, so that's cool. You also have a new extension to your 1, 2, which is 1, 2, 2. And she shoots this uh, safe uh, missile, which is pretty cool. Um, this can also be ducked, and your opponent already knows that they're supposed to duck here because this move existed in the last game. But sometimes they swing or make a mistake here, and you get this, and it's really good. It's also a spin move, which is uh, kind of cool. And you do use it for uh, combos. You also kind of use it for uh, wall carry. It's a very good wall carry ender for her combos. So that's cool. But there you go, your basic sort of poking package consists of the back one, the down back three, the down four, the down forward four, the down forward one, and then your jabs, right? Um, and you're gonna tie that together with movement, and that's gonna be like your 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 basic standard Elisa uh, stuff that you do when you're moving around. And then you have this good full crouch mix up, you have the sad hound, and that's like, you know, the starting point for the character. And then, you know, there's all this other stuff that you're gonna do depending on what opportunity presents itself, right? Okay, so I think we should talk quickly about her punishment. That's always important to know. Um, and uh, we also need to talk about 1-1 one, one, because it's an important move um, overall and for poking and everything else, right? So first of all, your standing 10 frame is still 1-1. One, one. Uh, it's been, you know, that since Elisa came out for the first time 23 damage is okay it's not exceptional but it's not terrible in this version of the game personally like this a lot because if you press one plus two you can get your chainsaws out at plus five um any move that has the chainsaw transition option you will get them out by pressing one plus two right so a classic elisa thing is you block something you punish you get the chainsaws out and then you mix with the chainsaws uh, which is cool on block, you can sort of uh, try this as well, you know, minus three, it's not terrible, but um, it is risky and you can get interrupted, so just be aware of that. Um, <clears throat> the second hit of this is duckable, this does not jail, and sharp opponents will be prepared to duck it, so be aware of that. Um, I'm gonna mention something that I, I uh, neglected to mention earlier, which is this four extension to the down forward one, by the way. Now, a big change to Elisa is that this has gone from safe on block to unsafe at minus 11, uh, which is a, a big nerf because this was a really good, solid, like, safe string. Um, but they have buffed it in one sense because if the second hit of this counter hits now, you gain uh, plus 13, which means that you can actually get uh, a, f a free heat engager for counter hitting with this. Now, I don't know how useful this is going to end up being because it's kind of hard to counter hit good players with this, but it does happen. 
and when it does you have you know a, a clear path ahead you're gonna activate your heat with a heat engager get the chainsaws out and then like try and you know saw your opponent down right you know it's the starting point for you attempting to take the round with the pressure that comes with that and that is kind of how this game plays overall you're kind of looking for that opportunity to engage the heat and then you're trying to push really hard in a short window of time to close the round out and your opponent's like uh, mission is to try and survive or try and push back with their own heat it's kind of what the game uh, plays like right now okay let's keep talking about punishment so the one one is the 10 frame this is where it gets really fun. Her new 12 frame, in my opinion, is probably one of the best 12 frame uh, block punishers uh, that I've seen in Tekken. I haven't gone through all of the new characters in this game, but this is completely new and completely exceptional. So she used to have 2-4. That move doesn't exist anymore. You can tell I'm trying to get it out here and it doesn't work. However, you instead have 2-2. Two, two. 32 damage which is premium for a 12 frame. It's sort of what you're looking for, for a strong 12 frame. If you can get a knockdown, you know, that's really, really good. And the famous strong 12 frames work like this, whether it's, you know, 4-2-3 from Bob, 4-2-4 four, from Lars, 4-2-3 um, from uh, uh, Shaheen and so on. Uh, the reason this is so good, right, is first of all, it's safe on block in the sense that it has a lot of pushback, right? Uh, so it's, it's minus 13, but in this space, your opponent is, is really going to struggle to like uh, punish it successfully unless they have something like locked and loaded and prepared specifically for this. In these early stages in the game, they don't, and so you get away with this pretty much all the time. But even as the game ages, you will still get away with this a lot. And what it does is it gives you a fantastic get off me tool, which is important in Tekken 8 because people are... Uh, on you and so you want to get them off you so say I'm being spammed down by my opponent there's some sort of, of small window you know 12 frames is all I need I press out or spam out the 2-2 and I boom boom them uh, away and deal a bunch of damage right so this is like easily one of the best 12 frames I think this is fantastic um, but you know it has that thing where it isn't safe and a good player with a character that has the capability will still punish it hard, right? So just be aware of that. Um, another very, very cool thing about this 2-2 is you can get it guaranteed in some situations. So 4-4-1 four, four, plus 2 is this old move. It used to be a launcher that Zafina, sorry, Elisa, didn't really use. Um, it was used for wall combos previously. It can't be used for wall combos anymore. Um, but it's just this double like hand stab. It's uh, safe on block Now at minus nine, which is great. And then if this counter hits, that's where it gets uh, crazy, right? If this counter hits, sorry um, There we go You can tell a chainsaw comes out she deals 28 damage and she gains plus 13 Which means that you get 2-2 guaranteed because 2-2 is 12, right? So you can do this and that sequence is completely guaranteed for 50 damage. Now, if you get that, and I've done this, and it's the most fun I've had playing Tekken 8 so far, if you get this near the wall, where there are explosives loaded in the wall, which there are on some stages here, you do that 50 damage, the opponent explodes, goes behind you, and then you do a full combo off of pretty much a 50 damage launcher, right? It's super sick. So, a uh, great new counter hit tool for Elisa. It's kind of hard to counter hit with this, even though it is kind of fast. It's just, you know, um, taking it is so fast that finding an opportunity to throw out something uh, like this uh, aggressively becomes kind of risky. But, you know, as we get better at placing it, I think it's going to turn out to be one of our best moves in this uh, version of the game. But that's 2-2. Two, two. I love it. I think it's fantastic. And the more I use it, the more I like, you know... Uh, make it a more important part of my repertoire, I suppose. Okay, you have a, a, a very strong 14 frame with Elisa as well. This one is changed. So it's a uh, Ford 3-2, uh, it's a long range high. It used to be um, uh, that you could get um, a lot of guaranteed damage here, you still can, but the damage has changed. So with Chainsaws, you have a completely new string, which is Ford 2-1-2. Looks like this, minus 13 on block, um, but it's mostly used as a combo tool. It's also um, 
uh, heat engager and you can heat dash off of this. So if you get this in a combo and then heat dash after it, it does turn into a combo starter. If that sounds like, you know, a little bit difficult to, to understand right now because the game is new, don't worry about it. I can show you an example later. But for now, just know that when you punish with um, 4 3 2, you do this string and you get 47 damage. So it's it's honestly really strong for a 14 frame, you know. The move itself, I think, is still safe on block. Yeah, minus four. It is duckable, of course, but um, I think this is, is, is strong. I haven't used it that much personally yet, but I'm gonna try and like, you know, use it more for a whiff punisher. She kind of has more powerful things for whiff punishment that is only slightly slower. So um, I think maybe that's why it doesn't see much use, but if you block something that's specifically minus 14, then, you know, knock yourself out with this. It also has a one plus two extension for 35. This is natural. And that's mainly there to uh, discourage people from ducking the high right. So you can mix that in, but be aware that this version is uh, punishable at minus 13. And then at 15, you have two options for launchers with Elisa. You have her uh, double hit hop kick. The big change to this move that you need to be aware of as you go into Tekken 8 is that it used to force the opponent to crouch, you know, by pushing them down to the ground, and it doesn't anymore. I think that's a pretty good thing uh, for her because it means that uh, characters that have a 13 frame while standing launcher, like Kazuya, can't launch this anymore. Uh, he can still do a powerful punish, a 13 frame move, uh, but it needs to be from standing because they're standing after this. You can tell there that the force crouch icon does not appear. Um, in the properties the way it does when I do this back to one right here. that That's what that icon means, right? So that's an important change. It's a powerful launcher. You're gonna get big, big combos for hitting with this in this game. So, you know, it's it's worth throwing out the occasional hope kick in this game. Um, just as a quick example, you can do something like uh, this. And that's like not optimal and it's 70 plus damage, right? So like I said, Elisa has like uh, good high damage for combos in this game. The other uh, 15 frame that you have is the back 4-4. Four, four. This is the new move that they gave her late in Tekken 7's lifespan. And this is tied to its own built-in combo. So you can't really use this and like launch with it and then do other stuff. You kind of have to do the combo as pre-packaged, but it's back 4-4, four, four, 3 uh, plus 4 to go into this fly stance here and then uh, the one two one three plus four I think is the notation for that string so you get 59 it's not high damage compared to the hop kick the main reason to use this back for is that you can tell it has uh, some very significant range the hop kick by the way I feel probably has reduced range in this game I, I feel that like it's shorter than it used to be maybe I'm imagining things but it means that both of these moves end up having a niche and back 4-4 is actually a very solid whiff punisher. However, when the wall is in the mix and angles are in the mix, it kind of falls apart a little bit because you need the space to do this entire sequence for you to be able to get your damage. So just be aware of that. It might be better to just do something, you know, fast uh, that wall splats if you're gonna, you know, punish at the wall, like a 2-2 or something like that. And then for 16, you have your down 4-2. This is another great launcher. It's safe on block. It does not launch crouchers, um, which is a trade that I will take any day for my down 4-2. Um, it doesn't have massive range, but the fact that it's safe means that you can throw this defensively and just pepper it in kind of like a, a sort of slow poke. And um, when you get it, you know, it's a free combo. Um, this has traditionally been a low damage launcher for Elisa, but because her new tools in this game boost her combo damage so hard, this has actually become a lot more viable, or sorry, uh, valuable I should say. Hitting with this is like very, very valuable right now. Because you can do, again, like a sub-optimal combo with this. Let's uh, show something quickly. Like, um... And then run up and like end with something like this and that's 64 you can get a lot more you can get 70 i think for this as well but you know healthy damage a lot of wall carry all kinds of stuff right so this move is great and you should uh use it a lot um, but it's a 16 frame punisher as well and then you also need uh punishers for pushback moves and you have two important options right here first you have the uh up forward uh three two which is 
as you can tell, 17 frames to impact, um, and that is occasionally useful. However, in Tekken, if you don't know this, most moves with significant pushback that require you to uh, use a long range move to punish, they tend to be minus 16. Um, so it, they're very difficult to punish sometimes, but this will work on you know some of them and, and be very powerful for that. You can also use it as a very long range like whiff punisher or combo ender and you're gonna get good damage. Now 45 is quite high. Another option and my preferred option, we did some testing with this on stream the other day, is up back two. So up back two is one of Elisa's best moves uh, in this version of the game. This is uh, an armor move. The notation used to be back forward two. Now it's just up back two, which means that the move comes out a lot faster. And that also makes it another fantastic get off me tool, interruption tool, keep out tool. It's high, but it's safe on block. This move is amazing. You should use it a lot with this character. I mean, hard to overstate how fantastic this is, but because it impacts at 16 frames, it also becomes extremely useful for pushback punishment because as you can tell, the range is like massive. Uh, but the impact frames are variable, but you can tell even at like this range, it's it's still 19. And so the testing we did on stream was punishing Oscar's uh, back three, which is kind of hard for a bunch of characters. And it's a, a an abused move by Oscar players, um, but this thing will paste it solid. So that's really good. Um, for your while standing punishment, things are not amazing. Uh, but you have a while standing four, same as pretty much every other character. Uh, 15 damage uh, plus six, so it's, it's decent. It doesn't, you know, have massive range or anything. It doesn't lead into anything else, uh, but it's there. Um, for uh, 13, you have while standing one, two. I think this move is due for a buff. Uh, I don't think it's great because while it is. 24 damage, so more damage than your wild standing for, that's actually still quite low, and the second hit of this is duckable, and good players do duck this. You know how in Tekken you have a bunch of moves that are duck duckable, but people don't duck them, and then you have moves that people do duck. This is one that good players do duck a lot, and a bunch of people don't, but you know, whatever. And it has this three extension as well, which becomes a launcher, so you can like trick people into swinging, delay that, and then launch them with this, and that works sometimes. But there you go. Uh, and then for 15 frames uh, while standing, you can do your hop kick, of course, which is probably the preferred option because your dedicated while standing launcher while standing too, while still good, 17 frames, so on the slow side. And the combo also has a little bit of awkwardness, even though it's very powerful, because you have to do while standing to hit confirm, press three plus four, um, and then do this sliding kick to get your combo off of this, right? Um, but if you do, the combo is is very, very solid. You know, it's it's upwards of 80 damage, so it's great. But you can get very impressive damage off of the hop kick by itself, so you don't really need it for that. Uh, but that basically um, describes all of your punishment with Elisa, and we've talked about most of your important moves. I think now we should explain her heat, and we should talk about her moves when her chainsaws are out. Maybe I'll start with the chainsaws out, and then we'll transition into heat. So when Elisa uh, gets her chainsaws out, her entire move list changes. There are basically no moves, with the exception of like maybe this, that she can do without the chainsaws and with the chainsaws. So she essentially becomes a different character with a different move list and she becomes a lot more mix up and aggressive, uh, aggression oriented, right? So your fastest move uh, that you use a lot from this stance is forward one, which is this face stab. The reason this is so good is that it's very, very fast. It's 11 frames to impact and when the opponent blocks it, it's plus three. So a lot of the time what you do with Elisa is you go into chainsaws and then you do a couple of these, one or two. Uh, you know, if you hit plus nine, fantastic. If they uh, block it, you do chip damage. Elisa's uh, chainsaws do chip damage in this game. Not a lot if you don't have heat active though. But you get a little bit of advantage and then you can do something bigger from the uh, stand. So it's kind of like you set it up. You go into the stance and then you set up the mix-up using the, the forward one. But it's a, a, a fantastic and an important tool here. And because it is your fastest move, you need to keep it in mind. 
Um, the mix-up lows that you have from chainsaws, and I can't go through all chainsaw moves because this is gonna end up being like a very, very long tutorial if I do, but I'm gonna teach you how to use it basically, right? Uh, you have down two. This move has been changed from previous versions. It was inconsistent in the past. This new animation makes it much more consistent. It now works for Oki at the wall. That old load used to just get you killed because it pushed them away in weird ways when you did it. Now it really works. It's just three hits and Elisa does this big, big instep on the final hit, giving it a lot of consistency. So this is like a, a, a really good move for her and like a mix up blow. Minus 14 on blocks, so keep that in mind. Uh, the other main one is the down one. Uh, this is, you know, less damage, a little bit less, you know, uh, uh, risky. But uh, a cool thing about it is that this used to um, really migrate Elisa to the left or the opponent to the right. It used to rotate like that as you did this, meaning it was pretty inconsistent. But I feel like they've corrected that now, and I can do this move continuously without messing up my angle, which means that it has a lot more consistency. One thing that would happen a lot in previous games is you would apply this and then maybe try and apply it again, but the opponent had been pushed to the side and you started whiffing it, you know, and missing your mix-up, maybe even getting launched. So that move is buffed as well. Those are your, your main lows for mixing. And then your main mid for mixing is just the uh, chainsaw one. It's a fantastic and, and really important move for uh, Elisa. So you can tell right here that this move is it's mid, it's safe on block at minus nine. It deals a bunch of damage, 35, so it's, it's a fantastic mix-up mid. But what's also cool about it is that if you get the hit and you fly and you do a one plus two uh, from flying chainsaws, you um, can get all this like really good damage on the opponent as they stay on the ground or as they're getting up. In Tekken 7, this was not guaranteed. The opponent had to know that they could roll to the side to escape it. A lot of people, even at pretty decent ranks, did not know that, so you could still abuse it up to a point. In this game so far, no single opponent I have played against has successfully evaded it, and some have been very good, like experienced players. So I don't know if this has now been changed to where it is actually guaranteed or whether or not you can still roll it. I'm going to assume that you can still roll it, because if you can, it's very, very good. Um, but that's your basic mix-up and your basic like package from Destructive, really. You're setting up and pressuring with this thing, uh, trying to set up the mix-up or interrupt the opponent and gain advantage, and then you're mixing this one with these two lows. You have some other good um, mix-up options that I, I might as well mention quickly. The 2-1 is uh, a combo starter. Uh, you can only do that uh, spin move uh, missile hand if the first hit connects, but it's also safe on block in the mid, so that's really quite good. You can also do back to one. It's a natural combo for 33 damage, so really quite good as well for a quick mix up uh, mid. Minus three on block, safe again. You can tell that the frame data is actually really quite good for this character. Another big one is forward one plus two. This is uh, an advantage mid. It's kind of slow and easy for the opponent to backdash out of it, so you have to be careful when you apply it. But when it connects, you can get guaranteed damage with that string that we saw before, so it becomes really quite powerful. You can also, when you hit with this, actually do a, a flying chainsaw 2-1. Um, it's, for some reason, kind of difficult to get in this. It's sort of precise. There we go, and you get 59. So, you know, you can still get that, but it's 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 a little bit hard uh, if you don't practice it. So, you know, most of the time, maybe just collect this, you know, string and call it a happy 47. How about that? All right, so basic uh, chainsaw stuff. Uh, the last move I will mention here, because it is important, is the one plus two. Uh, and that is because good players, as you transition into chainsaw, will start sidewalking. And Elisa will go and do her slow chainsaw moves forward, and they will hit you on the side. So you have to pepper in against good players this uh, fast homing move right here to catch them. And then you get, you know, massive damage for doing that. So, you know, not bad at all. Um, and that's, yeah, ba the, the basic moves. You have some other stuff, but, but let's keep it there. I think that's more than enough to, to get started. Now, let's talk about heat. So with all of your characters in Tekken 8, there is a heat gimmick or a way you are supposed to strategize using your heat. So 
you know, King might get, get unbreakable throws and hit because he's the grappling character. Um, Leo can do um, powerful mix-ups that are only um, available during install, but but can do as much uh, as much as he or she wants during heat and you know, stuff like that. So, what is Elisa's sort of heat gimmick or strategy? Well, it revolves around chainsaws. It's basically that when chainsaws are out, and we can show that here, the chainsaws start to do a massive amount of chip damage on block. See that? Just by doing the forward one a couple of times, and mind you, it's it that is plus three on block and I'm doing uh, an 11 frame move. So unless the opponent ducks there, they're just gonna stand there and block. And a lot of people b block the chainsaws a lot, but it's kind of like you're sawing into their arms, you know, and doing all this great chip damage. And so you're kind of trying to activate heat, have the chainsaws out and then deal a bunch of chip damage on block. And then when your heat ends, you're gonna try and like prevent the opponent from gaining that health back. So you're like establishing the advantage, right? I think the typical sort of heat sequence for Elisa is going to look something like this. You're going to activate heat with, you know, a heat engage or universal heat. You're going to make the opponent block and get some chip damage, and then you're going to end with this new string. And the reason I say that is this string by itself does a lot of chip damage on block. If you look at it here, the final hit, see that? That's a massive chunk for a single hit. And then you heat dash by uh, pressing forward after this and you exit um, chainsaws at plus five. And that means that, okay, I've dealt a little bit of chip damage here. Now I'm gonna do this string, do another massive chunk of chip damage and I exit my heat at plus five. So I've done the job. I've done the chip damage. I'm gonna add, add a chunk here at the end. And because I exit at plus five, it's still my turn and I can keep piling on pressure, making sure that the opponent is not able to regain all that uh, recoverable health that I've just stolen from them, right? I think that's the basic strategy. What they're gonna do most of the time is activate their own heat and then try and push back, and that's sort of the, the dynamic of Tekken 8. But if you can hold on to your heat a little bit longer and do this after they have already used theirs, that's gonna be very useful. Another thing that you can do with heat, and this is the other way of strategizing with heat with Elisa, is you can do her um, heat crash, I think it's called, her heat finisher. Looks like this, has one of the best animations in my opinion, her entire like, you know, uh, torso rotates or the legs, I guess. Massive damage, it's fast, you know. Um, but the reason this thing here is pretty cool is if the opponent blocks it, You can press forward three to uh, go into a um, chainsaw fly uh, pressure mix-up. You have uh, plus 10 and you have two mix-up options here that are both 19 frames to impact, which means that they are both uninterruptible. So the opponent basically has to eat this mix-up. So what's the mix-up? Well, it's between two completely new moves that Elisa did not have in the past. So it's flying chainsaws forward one which is 49 damage for a mid. And I think this is only uh, minus 10 on block or something. It's it's unsafe, but it's not very unsafe. It's not launch punishable or anything. And then the other option is flying chainsaws 422, which is her hell sweep or falling leaf for 30 damage. And that is launch punishable, whether you do one or two hits. So just keep that in mind. Um, so what you can do with Elisa as well is you can activate your heat you can deal uh, some chip damage, and then as your heat is running out, you can tell that my heat is running out right now, you activate this, you force your opponent to block that as well, and then you get a free mix-up at the end, right? Um, so that's another way of using the heat with her. The one awkward, sort of not very great feeling part of Elisa's heat, in my opinion, is that because it's so centered around the chainsaws, um, you will find yourself in heat and you don't have the chainsaws out. And now it's like, okay, I wanna use my heat, but I have to get into chainsaws somehow first. Um, so how do I do that? Otherwise I can't really capitalize on this heat, right? Well, Namco have obviously like thought of the same thing because they've given you um, a transition to access your flying chainsaw mix up quicker when heat is activated because you get this new move. It's um, forward um, one plus four. So if I activate heat and press forward one plus four, 
Elisa will um, get the chainsaws out and start flying in. This is something that you can't normally do. You can only do this off of moves typically. So the idea is I have heat, I'm out here, I do this and I fly in and I mix right away. I think this is probably still a little bit too slow. It, it obviously doesn't work at close range because it's way too slow for that. It can be used, but it's sort of um, a, a way to mitigate that awkwardness of, you know, you go into heat and you don't have the chainsaw, so you can't really use it. And I think in those cases, instead of using this, you would probably just like try and get the heat crash. Um, and just, you know, if you get a hit 50 damage, if you don't, you do that mix up and then heat ends and it's fine, right? You at least did something, you got something. Um, we're gonna talk about our heat engagers now and it's gonna like illustrate this this thing that I'm talking about. So uh, for her heat engagers, you have up for two. This is fast, it's high, it's safe on block, 16 frames. And it is a chainsaw move, meaning when you hit with this, you go in and you have chainsaw. So now you're gonna deal chip damage, you know? Or maybe even get a hit, even better, right? Another version that you have is the 3-2, 13 frames to impact. This is the version that you can get guaranteed in some situations. Uh, so this is uh, one that you can also get guaranteed for counter hitting with this thing. Uh, and you can also get it for counter hitting with uh, the second hit of this thing, as I showed you earlier, right? You just have to be very fast. I mean, it's a one frame window, right? But it's it's not that strong. Um, so this is uh, probably one of your better ones. It is duckable though. Uh, and it also puts you in heat with chainsaws and you can deal chip damage. You also have this new move, one plus two. And this one is 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 good because it's safe and mid. Like my viewers keep telling me that I need to use this new move. I personally don't think it's it's super impressive because it's 19 frames to impact. It is safe on block, but it, you know, when we saw it, it looks like it's gonna be, be plus on block, which would have been fantastic, but it isn't. But what's good about it is it's a safe option that you can attempt and you can get a heat engage. However, when you engage with this, you go into heat without chainsaws, which is worse, right? Uh, and now you're going to have to either like try and hit your opponent with something and then get the chainsaws out somehow, which you can do, or um, you're going to like focus on trying to do something with that heat crash, getting a hit or getting it blocked and forcing that flying chainsaw mix up instead, right? So that's a quick rundown on like um, what her heat uh, package is like. Um, I think it's a cool gimmick. I think it's a great idea. It thematically works that she will, you know, you don't want to block chainsaws with your arms, right? And she's like, you know, putting them, they turn red. Mine don't because I've customized my character. I think that's why. Um, it's a fantastic idea for a heat gimmick for Elisa. Personally, right now, I feel like it's a little bit undertuned maybe. Uh, compared to like some of the crazy things that other characters can do when their heat is active. Um, so I think it's a great idea, but I just think it needs to be looked at uh, a little bit um, and maybe made a little bit more intuitive and, 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 uh, and powerful. But you know, we'll see, maybe it's fine. Maybe we just haven't learned how to use it yet. Okay, uh, I wanna talk about some combos right now because your combos have changed in a lot of ways. You have this new spin move and damage ender. It's it's fantastic and it, it's the reason you get all this high damage in this game, right? Also, that new move that you use for a mix-up mid from Flying Chainsaws is another 49 damage ender that you also use in combos, right? So this is where you get your, your really high damage. Now, typically with Elisa, when you launch, with our standard launchers like down 4 2 and uh, hop kick, you will do either this for your filler hits, or you can do another version, which is that. Um, in uh, this version of the game, I think you should switch the order of uh, forward uh, 2 and down forward 1 1, and you should do down forward 1 1 first. The reason for that is. Your spin moves just work and are more consistent after forward two, as opposed to down forward one one, at least for the most part. And then you're gonna wanna spin again for the most part with this new up forward one. You just press up forward one and she does this entire sequence uh, and you don't have to do anything else. Throws down the head and then the head as it's bouncing away explodes. The cool thing about this move is that the explosion actually happens in all directions. So uh, when the wall is there, um, the opponent might be quite far away from the head, but if the blast wave hits them, you still get the damage and the spin, and you can do some really crazy things at the wall. I'm gonna show you um, 
later how that works. But if you're like in a corner and it's awkward and your opponent's just sort of in a spun state and you just need to do some damage, you throw this down after a spin, same thing, and it's just massive damage. So it's a, a very good little tool to have, but the wall can cause the head to bounce because the head bounces through the wall, obviously, far away, <clears throat> and then the blast wave doesn't hit the opponent <clears throat> and you don't get the damage in the spin. It's also important to keep in mind that when the blast wave hits the opponent, if the head bounces, bounces past them, and but it blasts back and hits them in the back, it will still knock them backwards. I, if that, so what I'm saying basically is if my head goes behind Lars and hits him, he will still fly backwards, uh, which is kind of fun. And it means you can do some crazy wall stuff with it. Um, so, you know, pick your favorite uh, out of these two filler options. Um, spin with up forward one, and then you can run up and do enders. Um, a really good ender is running up and doing another one of these. That's really quite strict for the most part, but it is possible in most combos. You have to run really fast, you have to run really deep, but you can do it. And that's going to be, I think, optimal damage for the most part. See right there? The blast wave caught him and I got 75, right? Um, another option that you have is when you do the up forward one spin move, you can press forward three or forward three plus four if you're a legacy player. You're probably more used to that. And uh, Elisa will go into Flying Chainsaws, and then you just do forward one from Flying Chainsaws, and she will do that ender and say good game, which is kind of cute, you know? Um, and that's, you know, good out in the open, but, you know, it's a lot less than 77, so maybe you want to practice that deep run up forward one for the ender. And then another really good option that you have that I personally really like right now is 1-2-2 um, two, two because it, it's decent damage, but it's also very good for wall carry. So, you know, you do something like uh, this or the, the same combo as we've seen before. You run up. And you can see how far that sends them for the wall and you still get 67. It's really quite cool. Now, your sort of standard spin move that you use if you're not using up forward one, because this is a three hit thing, it's not always going to be, you know, um, optimal for the situation that you, you, you're in, is back two, three. So it's a new extension to your back two, you still have the old extensions, back two, one, back two, four. Um, all of these options, as far as I know, are natural. The back two, one is uh, minus 13, but the second hit counter hits, which is kind of great. Um, the back 2-4 is not a spin move anymore. It's still duckable, but it's a cool like wall splatting option. And then this here, the back 2-3 is launch punishable, but a spin move. You can delay these options for like a really long time. And this is what you do to like fish for um, wall splats, but you can also sort of hit confirm it. It's kind of hard, but it's possible. So, you know, you're knocking the opponent down at the wall. You do this. You hit confirm it, you pull the trigger, and now you do a massive damage wall splat, right? So uh, that's quite cool. But basically what I'm trying to say here is if you're comboing with the character and you want to do a more, I mean, a less wild spin move, right? You can use the back 2-3 and that's going to do you proud. And the spin that happens after back 2-3, Elisa flies forward and lands very close to the opponent and you can pretty much always get an up forward one. Uh, for a big chunk of damage there at the end, which is really cool, right? So you do uh, See uh, So that's another option that you have and then you have classic Elisa options for your um, uh, Wall conversion tools so you know you can still use back 4-4 four, four and then fly that puts them on the wall and then you do this sequence I wouldn't recommend using back 4-4 four, four for a spin move because it's just kind of low damage, but there you go. Run up back 2-4 is still good if you're trying to get the wall. Running 3-4 is still kind of good if you want to get the wall. Um, so you have a bunch of different options for converting your combos. Uh, a couple of the combos that have change include counter hit down 3. We haven't really talked about this move yet, but it is kind of an important Elisa move. It's a, a risky, very long range low. When this hits at tip range, the extension, if you do a one, becomes guaranteed. It's kind of difficult to stick. Um, if you do it at that range, it becomes very seeable and the opponent can block and launch it, so you have to be careful. But if this counter hits, it can combo. Now, 
Uh, down three, one. This is a stance that you go into called uh, backup, by the way. The one is no longer a spin move. So if you want to spin here, you have to use a new move, which is um, backup two. It looks like that. And you get decent damage. But you can get even more if you just wait for the backup stance to end hold down and go into full crouch into a while standing for you can do a higher damage combo so that's what i re recommend you do for the most part because then you can do this right and capitalize on that really really high damage on the up forward one so that's one to keep in mind um any other combos that have changed in a big way not really you kind of do this standard stuff for the most part back for counter hit is sort of the same as the launch that i've already showed you um back um uh, for four as I've explained you have a built-in combo so you don't really have options for that so there you go um, at the this point we should talk about like other key important Elisa moves that aren't necessarily like pokes but are still like important for her right um, back three is a safe mid homing move that you use a lot with her uh, because it just has good range and high crush and so it's like a good mix-up tool. It's good for catching people to walk. It's good at the beginning of the round. So this thing is pretty important. And then you have two running moves that Elisa uses a lot. The running two. So it's a gap closer and pressure tool. And then the running three plus four. Uh, or sorry, the running uh, three, four. The running three, four is mid and safe. And you use it mainly to mix up the running two if they're ducking that a lot. Um, the running two is um, plus on blocks. You can use it as a pressure tool, but they can duck it. Um, it also seems to be a lot easier for opponents to walk and sidestep these options. They feel like they suffer a bit more from linearity in this game as opposed to previous versions. So you have to be a lot more careful. Like a tiny sidestep from even a big character will like um, evade these now. But then again, they've obviously buffed um, the while running input to be a lot faster and easier to do a close range. So maybe we just need to get, like be faster at throwing them out and, and you know be brave enough to attempt them at very close range kind of like how a Dragonov does with his running two, right? Uh, but a really cool change to uh, the running two option here is you can press one plus two and actually get your chainsaws out with this. So if you're really trying to get into some chainsaw pressure, it's a very cool way of accessing that because if the opponent, you know, hits uh, or you hit the opponent, you get a bunch of damage. If your opponent blocks, then you can start mounting this pressure. Now, for some characters, this uh, new uh, string here, the extension, becomes guaranteed for some characters it doesn't i don't know if it's intended to be guaranteed by namco but on lars i can't really seem to get this to work but if i have done it on like kazi i think and it does work on him so if this is meant to be consistent it's fantastic but it would be really cool for namco uh or um of namco to fix that for us so we can do it every time if you don't go into chainsaws and you get the hit you can do four one plus two which is another sort of 14 frame block punisher that you have and you can get a guaranteed 50 which is really nuts so you you obviously don't know if you're going to hit or get blocked before the move connects but basically if you're going to get the hit don't get chainsaws out if you're going to get blocked get chainsaws out is, is kind of how it works right so those are three other important moves to keep in mind the standing four used to be a magic four that counter hit it doesn't anymore so just the 13 frame quick homing move now which can be important if your opponent is walking a lot. Uh, and that's basically it for the, the main moves that you use. Your throws with Elisa are standard, and then you have two special ones. Your 1 plus 2 break is up for 1 plus 2. She gives them uh, her head and it explodes. Um, throws should be used. I'm sorry, my nose is a little bit itchy right now. Um, Throws are uh, more powerful in this game as opposed to Tekken 7 because if they counter hit, they become unbreakable now. And so throws should probably be a, a larger part of your overall repertoire. And then an another option that you have is full crouch down back one plus two with Elisa, which is this really cool throw. And because you spend a lot of time in full crouch, it's actually quite useful. If you do a fly stance and hold down, she will go into full crouch and you can sort of you know trick them with this because they're waiting for some sort of big mix up. Um, but then you just, you know, do this instead. We didn't really talk about backup stance much, other than its connection to down three. 
um, but it's just down back one to access this. If this really traveled back more and gave you more evasion, it would actually be quite fantastic. As it stands right now, this is not a very good stance in this game specifically, simply because if the opponent jabs, you can evade it with this and then get a hit. But in Tekken 8, <clears throat> especially now at the early stages, people aren't doing one attack. They're doing multiple hit strings, which means that you do this, and you evade one attack, but then their second attack catches you and it becomes a counter hit. So it's actually very risky. But if you're gonna go into this stance, two is a very fast knockdown high, safe on block. One plus two is a slow unblockable launcher, so kind of trolly. Um, the one is another safe uh, high powered knockdown high. And uh, a final move that we should talk about that is actually probably the best one and sort of the star here is uh, backup three. This is uh, a very sort of powerful mid launcher. The combo is kind of difficult to do. You have a, a, a couple of different options, but if you do get a hit with this, I think what I will be doing is running deep and trying to get down for it one one. And if you do that right, it's gonna look like, let's see if we can do it. That's too slow. And then you can do an up forward one right there. And you can do all of your standard end enders after that. And as you can tell, it's 67 damage on the spin. So it can be really, really big. But you're going to have to sort of practice that run because it needs to be really quite deep. One thing you can do if, like, the next hit is going to kill and you just need to get something is you can actually run uh, in and do a running two and get 51. And that's really easy to do when you get something and you don't risk dropping it, you know? But learning to capitalize on that, I think, is going to be really quite uh, important. So it's, it's worth practicing. Before I wrap this up, I want to go over to the wall and show you some wall stuff. Um, the wall has changed in this game. Uh, it can explode, which is cool. And you can also um, spin people during wall combos, which becomes really quite important. So if you're gonna uh, <clears throat> combo with Elisa at the wall, let's say we're splatting with this as our standard example, you can uh, spin with back two, three, and then do two, three, three and you get 66. It might not look like much, but this is very consistent and it just works. A bunch of different options uh, will just like, um, they just won't work uh, after the spin on the wall because the opponent is really trying to slide down so fast. Um, so you need to, some, uh, to use something that is very consistent. This is very consistent, so it works. Although you can, you can get a lot more damage if you get creative. If you are comboing to the wall, and your spin is already used up, so you don't have that option. I think uh, your best wall combo option right now is probably one, two, charged uh, down one plus two, so you hold that input down, and you get a really nice big healthy chunk right here with the 50% scaling, which is what you want for the final hit of a wall combo. And if you do that, say, you know, I launch in the middle of the screen, I carry towards the wall, I use maybe a one, two, uh, two to put them on the wall, I can then run up and do this, and it's gonna be really good damage and really powerful. I can also sort of at this distance do a back four, four, and then this entire string will still function as a wall combo, so you can do that. Now let's talk about crazy wall combos using up forward one, right? So if you splat the opponent and then do uh, up forward one by itself, you can tell that the head is bouncing away and the blast wave isn't catching Lars. But you can mitigate that by doing uh, a little back dash and sort of creating a re-wall splat. See that? So the blast is way behind him, but it still spins him towards the wall. And because it is a spin move, you can then keep on comboing. Uh, so what you can do here, and this is kind of crazy, but it is like a, a legit thing. is that right there. So that might not look like a real combo, but as far as I know, it actually is. Um, so you're spinning with the first uh, version of the up forward one. The second one, you are missing the, the third hit of it, but the opponent is spiked in a state where they cannot tech or get up. And you press forward three, because you know remember when we hit with this in the open, we can press forward three, and Elisa flies with chainsaws. You do that, and then you do a fly stance four, and that is gonna hit guaranteed on the ground for uh, 17 extra damage, which means that the entire sequence 
ends up doing 68 plus 70. So it's 85 damage in a wall combo. One of the highest damage wall combos I've seen so far in the game. As you can tell though, it's gonna be inconsistent, very angle dependent. I end up in a situation after the combo where I am actually more likely to be wall splat again than Loris's. So I might sacrifice positioning advantage. This is cool and when it does hit and it, it can kill, it's gonna be massive. But I'd say for the most part, you want to go for something that is a little bit more consistent, right? And that is why I really like 2-3-3 uh, for an ender here. Uh, and you can do it like that as well. 76, you know? From 66 to 76, that's an extra uh, 10. So I think if you're, if you're splatting at a good angle, it is actually worth doing this little backdash into up forward uh, 1 and then uh, getting your damage that way, with the 50% scaling at the end as well. So just a couple of tricks that you can use with Elise at the wall. Like I mentioned earlier, this is still guaranteed and works uh, really well. Um, and and I, she kind of has a, a bunch of really good options for the wall. Another standard one that she's always had that still works, that is still solid, is the Ford 3 series. Ford, Ford, 3, 4, 3. Uh, and this is also something that you can use after you carry it, the opponent towards the wall using a combo. It is not a spin move anymore, however, and if you try and use this after a spin on the wall, it's not going to connect. Uh, because the opponent is sliding down too fast, because you have like too many hits in your combo. Alright, I think I've talked about <clears throat> pretty much everything I wanted to say. Uh, sort of a, a primer story guide to this character. I think if you can get a handle on what I've explained in this one, then you're going to be able to, to start to be successful with the character. And then we're going to learn a bunch more tech and, and new stuff. And there are moves that I haven't mentioned, you know, uh, as the game grows older. Um, I'm just going to have a quick think if I'm missing something big. Uh, uh, probably not, so I'm going to leave it there. Uh, I'm going to think of things later, but you know, that's what it's always like when you make guides like this. I really hope you liked this. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. Like I said, I do uh, sort of longer form and, and uh, kind of in-depth guides to characters sometimes. That's what I really like to do. I know, you know, there's um, a, a, a trend on YouTube where you do like, you know, a couple of minutes and you just like do uh, bullet points and you show everything fast. But I think the game is, 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 is fun and deep and complex. And having somebody with a bit of experience explaining things and using the associated language of Tekken, it's a more enjoyable viewer experience for me. It's the kind of, of video that I would want to watch. And I also feel like if you just have this on and you can absorb this, even though it is quite long, you're now at like a completely different place with the amount of knowledge that you have. So my recommendation, if you are interested in picking this, this character up and you like the guide is, if you have a second screen, like a phone or something, you can play this while you are in practice mode yourself with the character. And as I'm showing things, you can try them yourself. You can pause the video and go back. Um, and by the time you go into matches and start using the character, um, you're going to have this like uh, repertoire sort of ready to go. Um, so yeah, we didn't talk a lot, a lot about these fly stances or whatever, but you know, uh, we're going to have more opportunities. Um, thank you so much for watching it. Uh, I hope you liked it and I'll see you guys again very soon.